I was actually at the AWS headquarters when this, the day this all came out and it, it clearly sent um, shock waves through the AWS ecosystem. But I think the general rule of thumb, or at least the, the visibility that most AWS people have, or the, or the thought that most AWS people have is that VMware probably had a limited time frame anyway. I mean, if we're just being honest, everybody's running VMs, but as AI, as Gen AI and other tools become more able to help with uh, workload migration, I think people are starting to see that having your on-prem data center running in VMs is not going to be the most optimal way to do this going forward. And I think what VMware did was launch the first salvo saying, hey, we know that our product probably isn't going to be dominating the market the way it has for the last 20 years. Um, and that I, I think they're honestly, in my opinion, I think they're trying to get as much juice from the barrier as they can while VMware is still applicable. I think as AI starts to move into next generations, as generative AI does, um, already we're seeing AI running coding uh, pretty effectively. So you could see a world in two to three years where you would be able to move workload from cloud to cloud or from on-premise to cloud rather quickly using Gen AI. Um, so my thoughts on it are that Broadcom aligned with Google because when you're talking about AI, I think most people think Google first, but when you look at Amazon Q and Amazon Bedrock and some of the solutions that AWS has, um, and the fact that most customers see AWS as a broad landing uh, spot for most of the workloads, um, you can see where this has created some challenge. And so it'll be interesting to see how this plays out long term. But my take on it is, is that I think there is a limited time to get as much value out of VMware as they could. I think Broadcom is doing their best to do so. I don't agree with them sort of in essence, shooting AWS in the foot for this one. Um, but at the end of the day, from now on, customers can focus on how do I lift and shift out of my existing data center and then migrate and modernize. And that's really where the, the power of the Migrate One offering that we all have together comes, comes into effect for most customers. Yeah, so customers who are in VMC today, so customers who are already in VMC on AWS today, are faced with about a one year timeline to get it together to be able to migrate out to AWS fully, right? So although VMC will continue to exist, I think VMC on AWS migrations are going to cease and customers who are on VMC today are gonna look for a rapid path to being able to exit. Customers from Broadcom have recently just seen a five to 10 um, fold increase in their pricing. So really what happened is Broadcom created a compelling event where customers maybe weren't as incentivized to find a solution for their VMs in the past. I think now they're honestly giving very good, hard looks at what solutions could I have to get off of my VMware. Now there are some customers who are just gonna accept this price increase, right? There are some customers who are just gonna say, hey, it's too much work, too much cost to get out to the cloud. We're gonna go ahead and, and forgo that. Um, but for those customers who are either already in that motion, either having gone from VMware to VMC on AWS, or who are looking to natively start to consume AWS services, now we're gonna take long, hard looks at um, lift and shift mentality. So being able to lift all of those workloads directly into AWS and then modernate, modernize and optimize as they continue along, which again is part of the big value that we are bringing together between Relutex, Stratus, Grid, Exosphere, and ProsperOps together. I think the one thing that most people are, are lacking today is a knowledge of how to work within AWS. And I think that's a problem that we as partners need to get together and try to solve as well. Yeah, so obviously the MAP program is the number one migration funding tool, right? Um, so if we're talking about funding, uh, the MAP program is gonna be the most applicable use. And I think of all the clouds, it's the most lucrative uh, funding mechanism for offsetting the double bubble costs that most people have when migrating to the cloud. So MAP is the greatest tool that I think we have 
On top of that, I have inside information from AWS, and I think most of us have heard by now that they're going to be releasing some funding mechanisms specifically to go after VMware workloads. So for those customers who are in VMC, it's entirely likely that you might start seeing some added benefits to migrating those VMC workloads into AWS Native through various funding mechanisms that we expect to see over the next couple of weeks. Well, the interesting thing is that EDP is based on consumption, right? So even if they're consuming VMC on AWS today, that's considered consumption. So the the best way to have uh, these migrations impact an EDP or a PPA, um, private pricing agreement, is to um, get as many workloads over as you can as quickly as possible, right? So in order to hit your consumption targets, you need to migrate workloads. And I think that at the end of the day, um, I think that's what's going to impact most customers the most is what is the cost to migrate these workloads? What are the holdups that we have and how can we avoid double bubble cost, right? The big problem with VMC on AWS has always been seen as um, VMware was your home and then you move into a storage unit and you continue to pay for both your home and the storage unit while you then move out to your new house. And I think that is a really great analogy for the challenge at VMC uh, on AWS. But I think at, the, at this time, the biggest thing that we can solve are twofold. One, how do we get customers natively out of VMware into AWS or how do we get them out of their VMC uh, architecture on, onto AWS native? Um, and then how do we satisfy the work talent gap of folks understanding AWS where they were used to working in VMware in the past? And I think those solving those two issues along with the financials of it are going to start to make this very effective and very attractive uh, to partners or to customers who want to uh, explore AWS. This is going to be a little bit different for every customer, right? I mean, like it's going to depend on their workloads and it's going to depend on how prepared their um, workloads are to, to be dropped into the cloud. I think it's the biggest challenge that a lot of customers I've seen over the years is, hey, we don't know how to refactor this monolithic application. And this is where a partner like Stratus Grid could really come into play, right? Um, whereas if we can refactor an application or a workload to make it more cloudy or to make it able to be run in the cloud more effectively, you're going to have a smoother transition, right? So identifying the workloads that are cloud able to be moved to the cloud quickly through utilizing a variety of different cloud maturity assessment tools and by running assessments with various, various partners uh, or AWS directly to be able to evaluate your environment for its ability to migrate, I think is the first challenge that we have to overcome. And I think people have what's called assessment fatigue. They're used to companies coming to them saying, hey, let me give you a free assessment and let's go from there. And I think there there really is almost seen as a free assessment is almost seen as a dirty word, but we all know that assessing your environment is the first step to a successful migration. I think the other challenge that you're going to have is there is a contingent of old guard in a lot of these companies that still sees VMware as a top uh, option, right? Um, they're still used to the VM sprawl back of, you know, 10, 15 years ago, and they really haven't adopted the value of cloud, which is to take advantage not only of your ability to split your environment up in a secure, safe manner, um, but also to be able to provide your customers with scalability, flexibility, and elasticity that cloud provides. And see, just doing that in your own environment today, even if it's on private cloud, is a very cumbersome and costly venture. So we're trying to help customers understand that if you're on VMware native today, that the, that the program that we have put together here with you guys is helping us to identify workloads quickly that can move to the cloud. We're working on programs to offer customers the ability to sell back that data center asset or those data centers themselves to get out from underneath them. And if training and enablement is the biggest holdup, we have the ability to not only provide you with training options for your existing people, but also to provide you with staffing that could be able to offset some of the gaps that you have today. And that's gonna give you a much more successful and comfortable migration. Uh, today, Stratus Grid, right? So, so you know, the solution today 
is not automated, right? There's no automated. My, my suggestion for a solution is to pick the right partners that are there for you to be able to look at your unique workload migration uh, challenges and address each one of them independently. The, the problem that we have is you could have banking institutions who need a private cloud because of, of um, uh, compliance concerns. You could have a healthcare system have a, a private cloud because of HIPAA compliance regulations concerns. And if you're not solving each of these individually for the customer, there is no one size fits all. I think what we're all trying to do right now is figure out what are the lowest hanging fruit, what are the quickest workloads. And for me, anything running VMC on AWS, if I were a customer today, I would be reaching out to my partner and figuring out immediately, what do I need to do to get out from underneath my existing data center, consume on AWS native. But I think really this is a step-by-step -step process, right? We're gonna have to evaluate each customer's needs. Let's be frank, every VM could be a different size VM, right? You could have a VM workload running, uh, you know, a heavy compute digital, um, you know, graphics imaging, or you could have one running your back office marketing email campaigns, right? So VMs are not, you know, there's not a VM that is just typical. Um, so until we really solve each customer's individual challenge, it's tough to say what the biggest ones to face. I think the hardest one is understanding how to work within VM or within AWS when you're used to working within VMware. I think the second one is having the right people, processes, and technology in place to take advantage of the value that the cloud brings. And that's really where having the right partner uh, helping you do this is so critical because you can move things and people can move things all day. But if you don't move them right and with intention, and if you don't have an exact uh, spot that you're going to be putting these workloads and why, then you could end up, um, you know, costing your firm tons of extra money in the long term, just being candid. The, the first thing I would tell any customer looking to, you know, is this right for you is have you done an assessment of your existing workloads yet? Have you, have you assessed your environment? Um, have you analyzed the price risk, right? People, uh, you know, I have a saying, nobody gets um, promoted because of the cloud they choose, but a lot of people get fired, right? And just because Broadcom aligned with GCP um, for future migration work, doesn't mean that GCP is the place that every customer wants to go. AWS has a broad set of skills. Um, they have a broad set of offerings. They, they, they do the most releases annually. And I think it would be unfair, or unwise for any customer who was already looking at AWS as their uh, spot to land their workloads to then pull it just because of this. So I would tell every customer, evaluate your workloads, evaluate your cost risk analysis. You know, is the cost of the increase in VMware going to offset the value of staying there, right? And once you've identified that, get with your partner, get with Stratus Grid and bring us in uh, collectively and together. Together, we'll look at your entire environment. We'll look at not only your existing migration uh, offerings, but we're also going to take a look at what kind of on-premise gear do you have that we could buy back and provide you with additional value costs? What additional funding mechanisms can we take advantage of with, when, within AWS? And AWS has already announced they're going to launch a map for VMware acquisition uh, tool. So there is going to be a funding mechanism specifically to go after VMs. So if ever you were in a position to negotiate, if I were speaking to a customer, I would tell them if ever you are in position to negotiate, now is that time. You're faced with an exponential cost increase that's going to really um, drive down the value of VMware. At the same time, we're starting to realize that VMware probably is going to be irrelevant in the next three to four years. And then you couple that with the flexibility, scalability, and elasticity that cloud provides. And now you've got a real compelling reason to make a migration. I think there are going to be a lot of partners that are going to be going out to the customer base of AWS right now and talking about this. I think that for the first time all year, we've got something else that is very compelling to speak about from an AWS perspective. We've really, Broadcom, and for lack of better sense, created a compelling event, right? And the creation of that compelling event 
uh, is forcing customers to now have to look at something that in the past was foregone conclusion. We're already on VMware, VMware is easy, we're gonna stay with VMs. We need a private cloud, right? I think that more and more customers now are gonna be forced into a situation where they are going to have to uh, really deeply consider whether the VMs that they're running are the best path for them. And I think that, again, having the right partners, and I use the term plural on purpose, is going to be critical. You're going to need somebody to manage your security. You're going to need somebody to help you with the migration. You're going to need to make sure you have all the right people, processes, and technology in place. And then you're going to want to have somebody to help you make sure that once you're in AWS, that you're not stranded there trying to figure things out. And I think that collectively, that's what we're putting together. And that's what I would look for if I were a customer is who is solving the most problems with the least amount of hassle. And we're bringing that here with, with Stratus Grid, Relutech, ProsperOps, Exosphere, and you know others that we're going to bring into this motion.